Hey guys, how are you today? This is Ted with Salty Cycles. Hey, today I'm going to be taking apart my headset on my Argon 18 Dark Matter, uh, pulling the bearings out, cleaning them, re-greasing them, putting them back together. Thought maybe you'd want to see how to do that. Your traditional road bike, even mountain bike, will be more than likely simpler than what this is, but if you can follow this step by step, you can easily take care of your road or mountain bike. So let's get started. So first thing we're going to do is loosen the bolts that hold the handlebar on. Bring it down here, you can see what we're doing. So there's a couple different ways that handlebars might be held on. This particular one has four bolts. Some of them might have two. Traditionally, there's four. So this is a four millimeter bolt. So we're just going to take all four of those out and that will allow the handlebar to hang free. So I've got three of the bolts out down to the last one. So I'm going to walk you through taking that last bolt out and let the handlebar hang loose. So when you take that last bolt out, this front cap is going to come off and your handlebar will just drop. Now what we're going to do we're going to loosen up this bolt right here, which is the headset bolt. And then we've got two bolts on either side of the stem that hold it to the fork. So let's go ahead and loosen those. They're also four millimeter. So if you've ever wondered, how all this stays together you've never taken one apart you got a bolt with a cap mine has a spacer and you've got these two bolts in the stem that just provide clamping force on to the stem of the fork your fork runs all the way through the front frame of your bike once that's loosened up this it's just gonna come right off, just like that. We've got some more spacers here that are gonna come off. Now here's where Argon gets a little tricky. So this piece here, your bike probably does not have one of these unless you ride an Argon 18. So, Argon has made these and they have different, different heights. And what it allows you to do is not have to use so many heights, uh, so many spacers here. So this comes off, there's a bolt that goes into the frame here. This just comes right off, but it is a little, I will tell you, I've done this before, it's a little bit of a pain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to take the fork, I'm gonna lift the entire frame up and the fork is gonna drop out. Let you see that. Just like that. Let the handlebar hang. The handlebar is connected on this particular bike to the fork because it's got hydraulic disc brakes. And this is your lower bearing. Now your bike does have something just like this. And it's gonna fit in pretty much the same spot. Let's see if I can get you a shot of this. So this is your fork that runs through the front of your bike. Down at the bottom of your fork, down at the bottom of your fork, it's tapered. And the bearing, as you can see, also has a taper. It slides in there and it sits right on there and it spins. But then this piece, this beveled piece, fits up inside of your, of your frame and the frame is made in such a way, keep all this from falling over, your frame is made in such a way 
that that beveled piece fits up into it and then the flat part rides down on your fork. So we're gonna clean that really well. We're gonna reapply some lube. Okay, so I've got that proprietary piece from Argon 18 off. Now you're going to be able to see the top bearing that your bike is going to have one pretty much just like. So it is just going to come right out. And you can see all the way down through your frame here, the way that this bearing is made is exactly like the one on the bottom. Flat on one side, tapered on one side. You want to take note of how it came out it's got to go back in the same way. I know that might seem self-explanatory, but you'd be surprised how many times I've taken something out and thought, I wish I had taken a picture of that before I took it out so I know how it goes back in. This particular piece also has, I'm not sure what the technical term is, but it's a split ring. You can see it's split. See that? It's kind of tapered. That fits down into that bearing and that is the reason it's split is when the fork comes through it, it's going to open up, but it's going to be really tight. And when it opens up, it's going to open up inside of that bearing and it's going to create a pinch force. And that's going to keep your headset really nice and tight. So now I'm going to use nothing fancy paper towel. I'm going to wipe all the bearing surface. I'm going to wipe the top here, I'm gonna clean in the bottom here. I've actually been caught in the rain several times on this bike, so I wanna be sure that there's any road grime, any water, any dirt. I wanna remove all of that out. And then, if you've seen one of my previous videos, you hear me talk about the Park Tool Lube. This is the Poly Lube 1000. It's, it's just a general purpose bike lube. Uh, buy a tube of it, it's not that expensive. You can lube all your bearings with it from uh, crank bearings, headset bearings, even wheel bearings if you so desire. Um, it's just an all-purpose loop. So I'm gonna get everything cleaned up and then we'll start putting it back together. All right, so I've got the bottom bearing cleaned, the bottom surface area inside the fork cleaned out really well, and I've applied a generous amount of lube. I'm gonna use the top bearing to show you. So this bearing sits in here just like this. Flat surface is down onto the fork. Beveled surface is up into the frame because the frame again is beveled to hold this bearing. So I have greased here, here, all along the fork, all inside. You really can't overdo it unless you're just, just kind of crazy with the grease. But as long as you're putting a liberal amount, anything excess is gonna come out but remember oil and water don't mix. So I want a generous amount of lube in there. So that as I get, as I ride in the rain, as my bike gets wet, uh, the grease is gonna repel the water out. So now let's take care of the top piece. Okay. So I've got the bearing, I've got the grease. Just put it right on my finger. I'm gonna apply it right down in there all the way around Want a generous amount of grease in there this bearing is going to go this way flat surface up beveled surface into the frame i don't want to say that every bike is going to be that way but in my experience the beveled surface goes into the frame that's been my experience there may be bikes out there that aren't that way but when it comes to headsets, that has been my experience. So I'm gonna drop this down into there. Now watch what happens. As, let's see if I can get you a little better shot here. Right now, it's loose. But as that bearing sits into place, just like that, 
apply a little more grease through there. Now I want to clean off any grease that's on the top portion because I want my I want everything to fit in here nice and clean. Now it's significantly tighter, not tight, but significantly tighter. And we have one more piece. We have the split ring. Split ring just barely fits down into there. And then when it, I work the fork stem, the fork tube, that is gonna go down into that bearing, just like that. And now it's really tight. It's been cleaned. Everything's been re-greased. We're really ready to start reassembling here. So now we just go backwards. We have our proprietary piece from Argon 18. We're gonna put that in there. There we go. That snaps back into place. Now we're gonna put our spacers. We're gonna put our stem. Now, if you don't know, most stems are reversible. So you have that way, you have that way. Now, if you can tell the difference, this way has a negative angle, this way has a positive angle. So for this particular bike, I have it set up for more of a comfort style, not riding in a real aggressive position. So I have it set up in comfort or an upward facing angle. So now everything's ready to go. I'm gonna start putting my bolts back on. But if you've seen some of my previous videos, you know that I am a big fan of white lithium grease. So I'm gonna apply just a little bit on the bolt threads. Set that down in there. All right, tighten that back up. Now, the most important thing here is when you're putting it back together, you wanna to be sure that your stem is in line with your top tube of your bike and it's in line with a tire that's straight. Just like a car needs to be in alignment, if your stem is not in alignment with your bike and your tire is not in alignment with your stem, you're gonna find that your bike doesn't really roll in a straight line and that's gonna be a problem. So at this point, things are starting to get tight. Now our two bolts, one on either side and the stem, I want to push down and I want to be sure that everything is really nice and tight as I tighten the stem to the fork steerer, the, the part that runs all the way up and down from the fork to the, to the stem. We have our part that runs all the way through here. So I'm pushing down to make sure that everything is compressed. My bearings, my split ring, Everything is compressed because as I tighten my st the, the stem, that's going to hold everything tight, keep my whole front end tight. So now you can see as I turn my stem, it turns my front wheel. Put my knees around the tire, try to turn that stem. I want to see if I have any play, and I don't. Everything is really nice and tight. So I'm gonna give this one last little snug. I'm gonna give these one more little tighten. And now we're ready to put the fork back, the handlebars back on. So we have four bolts. And I wanna put a little white lithium grease on every one of these. And what I like to do, I thread it into the stem before I put everything back together then I back it back out. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm getting the lithium grease down into the threads. If you want to do it a different way, just shoot some grease into the female portion of the thread. But I really want to push 
that grease down into here. Because again, oil and water don't mix. So if I've got my bolt and the female portion of the threads coated in grease, if, they're, if I do get water onto this surface, the grease will repel that water away. And then I'm not stuck trying to break these bolts out when they're all rusted. Okay, so just a little tip for you there. So it's not critical at this point because we're gonna we're gonna position it when we're all said and done. All I want to do right here is try to get everything put back into place, get the bolts working for me, and holding this handlebar in place. So once you got one bolt, get your hands back. Now this is a carbon handlebar. So we can talk a little bit about, about torque specs. You can get on online, Google torque specs for bicycles, and you'll find a lot of resources out there to tell you how tight you should tighten different bolts. So on carbon handlebars with a four, four bolt stem mount, I'm only gonna tighten this down to about 60 inch pounds. Now, hear what I said inch pounds, not foot pounds. Uh, if you're used to working on a car or, or any type of other heavy equipment, you're used to working in foot pounds. We're talking about really delicate carbon fiber and we're working in inch pounds. So now I'm gonna get that handlebar rotated at the angle that I want it. I wanna be sure that I'm centered in the center of the stem. Once I'm happy with all of that, start to snug down the bolts just so that the handlebar doesn't rotate. And if you're gonna be doing a lot of work on your bike and you've got a carbon fiber bike, I strongly recommend you buy yourself a mini torque wrench. Uh, Amazon.com. Harbor Freight is a great resource for these. This is a click style mini torque wrench. And if you can see that, it's, it's got grades or it's indexed, if you will. And it tells you wherever this orange piece is at, that's how many inch pounds you're gonna force before you hear a click. So I'm going to try to get you close enough where you can hear this click when I get to the 60 inch pounds. So if you're familiar with tightening up uh, lug nuts on a car, you know, you don't tighten one all the way up and then move to the other. It's going to be the same thing on your stem bolts. We're going to tighten them evenly. So we have even clamping pressure on the carbon on the carbon handlebar. Do you hear that click? That means I'm at 60 inch pounds on that bolt. 60. Sixty. Sixty. So that is a foolproof tool to not snap your carbon components. It's a good idea to use that carbon handlebars carbon seat posts, um, even, even when you're down on your bottle cages and you're screwing those in, those are going into metal uh, inserts, but I still would recommend looking up on your torque specs, what it should that be torqued down to. On a bottle cage holder, 15 to 20 inch pounds is plenty because there's really no, no force there. But we have just taken apart the front fork, front head, head unit of this bike, cleaned it, Regreased it, put it all back together, and you're done. 
you have any questions at all, if you have pictures of your bike, you want to know uh, maybe some do's and don'ts, tips and tricks, leave me a comment. I'll be happy to respond. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you on the next video.